we're going to quickly address the question of who invented the Homa Indian nation. Before we get started, I'm going to point out something that the excessive attention that has been paid to some of the dynamics with respect to the channel come from questioning anything about the indigenous history. And that is whether you are talking about questioning whether the people identified as indigenous are indigenous or whether there's a question about whether the indigenous people were infiltrated by the settlers and now have more of a settler uh, ancestry. It doesn't matter. Questioning the indigenous Indian narrative results in significant attention. And particularly if the questioning is related to certain content creators. And so if you question certain content creators, it brings about even more negative attention, which brings up the question of what is really going on with respect to the narrative. There's apparently a narrative that is being pushed and it seems like the narrative push started around 2016 or 17 or so. Um, but any questioning of the narrative might result in some negative outcomes. And then you have individuals who are heavily invested in the new narrative. And so therefore there is significant defensiveness when anything is questioned about the new narrative. Uh, what would be helpful would be if people identify themselves as being indigenous or Indian, if they would then take that step and look even deeper into that ancestry because there is a heavy settler colonizer dynamic not only going on in America but you had this heavy dynamic also going on in Africa where the settlers were exchanging identities with the indigenous people removing the indigenous people and doing God knows what else with the indigenous people and so there is quite a bit of confusion and because people are really uh, really happy about finally having this indigenous identity, they are often reluctant to examine the totality of that ancestry. And this is noted when people say things like they trace their ancestry back 16 generations and everyone was an Indian. And the first question comes up, where did you get that data to go back 16 or 17 or 18 generations? Uh, how did you come up with this information and how was your family able to not mix or mingle with the settlers or colonizers. The other issue is that many of these indigenous Indian groups are heavily identified with settlers. They have a heavy ancestry in Morisco and Morano dynamics. And so it would be helpful if people would start to dig a little deeper into what that is all about. But some people are reluctant to do that because they believe it sort of shakes that indigenous claim. And in fact, it may shake that indigenous claim because what it does look like is you had a number of Moriscos and Moranos planting themselves on soil in America and on soil in Africa and identifying themselves as indigenous groups. And so then you have all of their descendants making the same claim. We're going to focus on the Homa Indians for now, but this can be applied to just about any other Indian nation in the Americas. One dynamic that is going on that stands out and it's very bizarre is that enrollment in the Indian nation is about acceptance. It's not about birth. It's not about being indigenous. It's about this bureaucratic process of acceptance. Now the Homa, along with many other Indian nations, have a very interesting history and it's very, again, very settler focused. And so with the Homa, the history is that the name Homa is interchangeably Homa with H-O-U-M-A or O-U-M-A and it means, interestingly, red in the tribe's language. Now there's another focus with respect to the Homa Indians and it is a very French focus. And so there is a heavy French settler colonizer present among the Homa nation. And it consists of exiled French colonists, individuals from Nova Scotia, people coming over from France. And notably, 
this name is tied to some entities in Africa. Now, if you've ever been to the Homa area, you will see that there is a heavy Spanish presence, Italian presence, German, Caribbean presence, uh, British presence in terms of ancestry. There is a focus, however, on that French ancestry with respect to the language spoken, the food uh, consumed, the general life of the people. There is a heavy French focus. And there's also a narrative with respect to the Homa about them being very isolated. This is similar to the Lenape. And of course, the same questions can be presented with respect to the Lenape. Homa has a significant plantation history in addition to the Cajun history. So you have this Cajun history, you have this plantation history. So there's also a history of servitude in this particular area. And as noted, even though they were heavily isolated, there was not the heavy maintenance of the language. There was a significant adoption of the French language and ergo a Creole type of uh, dialect. One of the things that you see here is about the enrollment in the tribe, in the nation. And so there's an entire enrollment process as with other Indian nations and they maintain a database, uh, lots of genealogical information related to the members in the group. And then there's this notation that their tribal roles were closed, this is 2014, to all applicants over the age of five and that they were only authorized to receive and process applications for enrollment from children who were already enrolled tribal citizens prior to the child's fifth birthday. All other applications received will be returned as unable to process. This type of dynamic right here should bring into question a number of dynamics with respect to these Indian nations not only about the process, but about the veracity. Some people don't want to deal with this, but there is a question about whether or not these Indian nations, these Native American nations are actually the indigenous people of the land. This goes along with the dynamic of these mounds. And so many people are clamoring right now to be identified as American Indian, however, that status is also in question because there is a heavy settler dynamic and many of the genetics seem to tie to these settlers and it's virtually impossible to separate oneself, one's Indian self from one's settler ancestor. And then you have the issue of that word Indian and the history of Indian in India and the presence of settlers who had ties to the other place known as India. And as with names like Cherokee, Chata, you have this interesting dynamic in history with respect to the Homa. Now the Homa indicate that this name came from red which a number of Indian groups seem to have this affinity for this heavy relationship with the color red. We've already discussed that with respect to Africa and now we have this here in the Americas. Same settler groups, by the way. Now with respect to the Homa, what you find is that the name Homa, the surname Homa, the people with the Homa name or the Oma name are not primarily in America. In fact, that name is not prevalent in America at all. It is prevalent in Kenya, mm -hmm. Cameroon, and you also have a location in Algeria named El Homa, in addition to Homa in China. And so this brings up the question of who are the Homa that are in Louisiana? Who are the Homa that are in America? And is the Homa in America related to the Homa of North Africa? 
the Homa of East Africa or the Homa of Central Africa. Now, aside from China, these places in Africa are important because guess what? These are Francophone places. When you're talking about Cameroon, French. Algeria, French. Homa Indians, French. Acadians, Nova Scotia, French. And so this question is out there about who are the Homa exactly? And is there any possibility that the Homa are not indigenous? And by indigenous, this does not mean native. This means the original people of the land space known as America. When you are talking about a colonized land space, it is always important to keep in mind the identity of the colonizers. And so when you see that the Homa surname is primarily found in Cameroon, and then you find that the transliterations are primarily Arabic, it brings into question who the colonizers were. Now you know that there was a heavy Morisco Morano colonizer dynamic in southeastern United States. And so it would stand to reason that you would have this heavy presence, this heavy Arabic presence, this heavy Iberian presence in southeastern United States. And if you have a group of people who are colonizing, the idea behind colonizing is a takeover. They want the land, they want the resources and identity theft and ethnic cleansing is a part of that whole process. And so you had a group of people, the Moriscos and Moranos, uh, who were playing this identity game in the first place. And so it didn't take much for them to switch out identities with respect to the American Indian groups and also the indigenous people on the west coast of Africa. And here you can see a distribution of the homeless surname and you can see that heavy concentration in Africa, in North Africa, but then you see that central region there. And here are the numbers so that you can see them for yourself. Uh, the primary numbers are again in Cameroon, second, Algeria, next, Chad, next, Niger, next, Morocco, next, France, Solomon Islands, Senegal, Ivory Coast, and finally, at only 24, the United States. Now, some will argue that this is being presented in this way because Morocco owned America. However, what looks more likely is that you simply have an imperialistic colonizing dynamic, an ethnic cleansing dynamic, a, an identity theft dynamic, a land theft dynamic. And if you want to attribute it to Morocco, you can attribute it to Morocco, but this is what it looks like is going on. And here you have the same dynamic with respect to the OMA alternative that is offered by the Homa Indians. And you see here this name at 216,000 people. This name is most prevalent in Kenya followed at 24,000 in Uganda, Niger at 6,000, Sudan at 2,000, Tanzania at 900, Morocco 477, Mali 400 and something, Japan all the way down to Cameroon. And if you notice, you do not see the United States on this primary list for this name. And then when you look at the transliterations, you know, more red flags should come up because you have the transliterations in Hindi, you have them in Arabic and Russian. And so of course this brings into question that Eurasian influence yet again. And so as we wrap this up, you can see that there are many reasons to question the invention of the Homa nation, along with a number of those nations on the west coast of Africa. All of those nations identified on the west coast of Africa, the major nation names, those are European names. You do not see a presence in terms of names uh, of indigenous people. You see essentially some names for some black or brown Europeans for the most part. And it is arguable, argued, that you're seeing the same dynamic 
in the Americas with respect to the indigenous people of America. And so you might be looking at the screen thinking that this is a representation of the Homa Nation, primarily because when American Indians are traditionally presented in the Americas, this is the phenotype. You see some variation with respect to phenotype, but this is very similar to the phenotypes that you see with respect to a number of American Indians or indigenous people. Uh, but what's noteworthy about this is that although these individuals fit that phenotype, all of the individuals on the screen are Algerian. Remember, knowledge is power. Take care. See you soon.